The Emperor's New Clothes Many years ago, there was an emperor who was very fond of new clothes. He had different clothes for each hour of the day. He spent all his time and money on new clothes. He did not bother about his soldiers nor did he care for the people of his kingdom. He just waited for opportunities to show off his new clothes. Time passed merrily in the large town which was his capital. Strangers arrived every day at the court. One day, two thieves calling themselves tailors made their appearance. They told everyone that they knew how to weave a cloth which was made of the most beautiful colors and elaborate patterns. The clothes made from this cloth will have a magical property of remaining invisible to everyone who was unfit for the office he held or who was extraordinarily simple in character. These must indeed be splendid clothes, thought the emperor. If I have such a suit, I will be able to find out which men in my kingdom are unfit for their office. I will also be able to distinguish the wise from the foolish. This invisible suit should be made for me immediately. He ordered large sums of money to be given to both the tailors so that they can start their work immediately. So the two tailors set up two looms. They acted as if they were working very hard. But in reality, they did nothing at all. They asked for the most delicate silk and the purest gold thread. They put both into their own bags and then continued their pretended work at the empty looms until late at night. I want to know how the tailors are getting on with my cloth, said the emperor to himself. But he was afraid to go and see himself when he remembered that a simpleton or one unfit for his office would be unable to see the cloth. I will send my old faithful minister to check, thought the emperor. He will be best able to see how the cloth looks, for he is a man of sense and no one can be more suitable for his office than he is. So the old faithful minister went into the room where the thieves were on their empty looms. He was surprised. What can be the meaning of this? He thought. I cannot see any cloth here. However, he did not express his thoughts aloud. The two thieves requested him to come near their looms. Then they asked him whether the design pleased him and whether the colors were very beautiful. The poor old minister looked and looked but he could not discover anything on their looms because there was nothing there. Is it possible that I am a simpleton? No one must know it now if I am so. Can it be that I am unfit for my office? No, I will never confess that I could not see the cloth. Well, sir minister, you did not tell us whether the cloth pleases you. Oh, it's excellent! This pattern, the color, yes! I will tell the emperor how beautiful they are. The thieves asked for more silk and gold, saying that it was necessary to complete what they had begun. However, they again put everything in their own bags and continued to work at their empty looms. The emperor now sent another officer of his court to see how the men were getting on and to ascertain whether the cloth would soon be ready. It was just the same with this gentleman as it was with the minister. He looked at the looms but could not see anything at all but the empty frames. The thief said 
Does this appear as beautiful to you as it did to the minister? It must be that I am not fit for my office. This is very odd. However, no one should know about it. He praised the stuff he could not see and said that he was delighted with both the colors and patterns. He went back to the emperor and said, "The cloth which the weavers are preparing is magnificent." The whole city was talking of the splendid cloth which the emperor had ordered to be woven at his own expense. And now the emperor himself wished to see the costly cloth while it was still in the loom. He went to the loom accompanied by a few officers of the court among whom were the two honest men who had already admired the cloth. As soon as the thieves came to know about the emperor's approach they went on working more diligently than ever. Although they still did not pass a single thread through the looms. Isn't the cloth magnificent? said the two officers. What is happening? I can see nothing here. Am I a simpleton or am I unfit to be an emperor? That would be the worst thing that could happen. The emperor said, "Oh, the cloth is beautiful. The colors, the patterns are magnificent." The thief said, Oh majesty you should stitch a new suit from the splendid material for the approaching procession magnificent charming excellent resounded on all sides the emperor was happy and he ordered them to make a new suit from this new cloth the thieves decided to work the whole night before the day on which the procession was to take place they pretended to work very hard at last they said the emperor's new clothes are ready now the emperor came back to the tailors one of them raised his arms as if he is holding something he said Here are your trousers majesty here is the scarf and this is the mantle the whole suit is as light as a cobweb one might think that he has nothing on at all when dressed in it but this is one of the quality of this delicate cloth if your majesty can take off the clothes we will fit on the new suit The emperor undressed himself. The thieves pretended to dress the emperor in his new suit. How splendid his majesty looks in his new clothes and how well they fit. Everyone cried out. What a design. What colors. These are indeed royal clothes. I am ready, said the emperor. Do my new clothes fit well? he asked. looking at himself in the mirror now the emperor began the procession through the streets of his capital all the people standing by oh how beautiful are our emperor's new clothes in reality no one would admit that they did not see any clothes at all they feared that they will be declared unfit for their work and also called simpleton as the emperor walked further a small boy looked at him in surprise and said but the emperor is not wearing anything at all listen to the voice of innocence said his father what the child had said was whispered from one to another but he has nothing at all on at last cried out all the people the emperor was ashamed as he knew that the people were right 
but he thought the procession must go on he kept walking in the meantime the two thieves had already left the kingdom with all the valuables